Hello, my name is Kelly and I'm a training lead here at Wright Capital. In this short video, we'll review how to fill out your client profile. Let's begin. You should have received an email from your advisor inviting you to set up your financial profile. Click the sign up button and create your password. Once in place, we will land on step one of the data entry process. Wright Capital is designed from the ground up with your security in mind. The planning software uses bank level encryption to ensure your information is safeguarded. Do note, you don't have to complete your profile in one sitting. You can stop at any point and return to the platform to pick up where you left off. To begin, we'll start on step one, family profile. This is where you will input your family's information. Click into each card to update the name, date of birth, and state of residence. Remember to click Save. If you need to add additional family members to the plan, click the Add Participant button. These boxes are called Cards. Should you need to delete any of the cards within the software, you can hover over the X button to do so. Entering accurate ages is especially important for retirement projections, social security, and college planning. Once the family section is completed, we can click Next and begin Step 2. Bear in mind, you can skip sections as needed, but enter as much information as you can to the best of your ability. Under Step 2 Income, we can input your salary information. Click into the salary card to update it accordingly. We're going to use your gross salary as taxes will be calculated automatically later within the software. Enter the salary information for other members of the family and click Save. Next, we'll move to future income sources like Social Security. If you aren't currently collecting, you can use the Simple Estimate feature, or you can input your full retirement benefit amount, if known, by using the Based on Full Retirement Benefit option. Alternatively, if you are already collecting, you can click the Already Receiving checkbox and input your monthly benefit amount. If you have other streams of income to include, click the Add Income button and select from the categories displayed. One example would be if you have a pension but don't know the details, you can input a pension income card as a placeholder to discuss with your advisor later on. This card will serve as a reminder. Now we'll click Next and move on to Step 3, Savings. The Savings section is where we will input annual contributions to our investments, not their total balances. We will input account balances on the Next tab. If you are contributing to a 401k, click on the 401k card and input your contribution amount. You can enter your contribution as either a percentage of your salary or a flat dollar amount. If you're maximizing your contribution, you can select Maximum Contribution. Here, we'll also want to account for employer matches. In today's example, we have a 100% employer match for up to 3% of our salary. Once in place, we'll click Save. To add other savings, click on the Add Savings button and select the correct savings option. For example, if you are also saving to a Roth IRA, select Roth IRA and input the contribution amounts and duration. Once in place, we can click Next and move on to Step 4, Net Worth. In the Net Worth section, we will input accounts, properties, and insurance. The Net Worth section is a crucial piece of the data entry process. This is where we will input all our assets and liabilities as they stand today. There are two options for inputting your account information. You may see the Link Account feature. If you click the Link Account button, you can securely link all your accounts to your Wright Capital dashboard and view them in one place. For example, if you have a 401k at Empower Retirement, you can look up Empower, select the correct URL, input your username, password, and any multi-factor security code that you're prompted for. The code can come via text, phone call, or email. Once entered, your accounts will link and the balances will update automatically. Please note that most financial institutions now require multi-factor authentication in order to link to third-party vendors. Make sure you have multi-factor authentication set up at your institution's end site in order to link with Wright Capital. You can link checking and savings accounts, credit cards, investment accounts, loans and mortgages, all within this tool. If you are unable to link accounts, you can input the accounts manually by clicking the Add Account menu and selecting the account type from the drop-down. 
Again, if there are any questions, feel free to add the account as a placeholder for the time being and discuss with your advisor at a later date. Next, let's input property information. Click into the property section on the left-hand menu. Here we can set the primary residence from rent to own and input the details of our home, such as purchase price, current value, annual taxes, insurance, and maintenance expenses. Once in place, click Save. We'll also want to account for any mortgages associated with the home. If you've linked your mortgage, then this is already accounted for. If not, we can add the mortgage by clicking Add Account and selecting the Loan option, or we can input the parameters of the mortgage, such as the original amount, the year we took the loan, the term of the loan, the interest rate, and the loan's current balance. With these details in place, a minimum payment will generate. If you are making more than the indicated minimum payment, include your payment information in the monthly payment field and click Save. Should you have other properties such as investment or vacation properties, you can add those to the plan by clicking the Add Account button and selecting the correct property type. You'll want to input insurance policies as well under the Net Worth section. To do so, select Add Account Insurance and we can input the parameters of the policy. For example, if you have group life through your employer, you can input the death benefit and annual premium and click Save. Lastly, under the Net Worth section, we can add assets under the Other category to account for valuable items such as boats, RVs, or your prized collection of original artworks. Alternatively, if you own a business, you can list this as an other asset by selecting the correct business type from the drop-down menu. Once we have the Net Worth section squared away, we're nearly done. So far, we've indicated our income, savings, and assets. Now we'll need to account for our expenses and goals. Let's jump to Step 5, Expenses. Under Expenses, we'll input our average monthly expenses, excluding items such as mortgage payments, debt payments, or insurance premiums that we have already accounted for under the previous step in the Net Worth section. Your monthly expense should include items such as bills and utilities, groceries, entertainment, etc. If you don't know your monthly budget offhand, Ask your advisor about our budget feature, which estimates your average monthly spending. The budget tool takes transactional data from your linked bank accounts to aggregate your monthly spending across the budget categories. If you do not have the budgeting tool available, you can reference this information at your bank's end site to review your historical spending. For now, we'll ballpark monthly expenses at $5,000. To add additional expenses such as medical or alimony expenses, Click Add Expense and select the correct expense type. Once we've accounted for our expenses, we'll get to the fun part. Here, in the final step, we can enter our financial goals. First, we'll want to indicate the age at which we retire. And no, tomorrow is not an option. Click into the retirement card and update the retirement ages accordingly. Next, we'll move to our retirement monthly expenses. This card is similar to the pre-retirement living expenses we input under the previous step. However, let's say, once retired and the kids are out of the house, we now anticipate our monthly spending to be a little bit lower. Here, we can key in $4,500 and click Save. For younger clients, we recommend keeping the retirement expense card on par with the pre-retirement living expense card from earlier. Lastly, we'll find two pre-populated cards one for retirement health care costs, and annual retirement LTC cost. These numbers are based off of national averages for Medicare expenses as well as long-term care expenses. You likely have other goals, perhaps funding your child's college, or purchasing a vacation home in retirement, or maybe even buying a boat. These are items that can all be included in the goals section. You're all set. Once we hit the complete button on the bottom right, our advisor will receive a notification email letting them know that we've input the information. From here, we can discuss our plan with our advisor, such as probability of success, what if scenarios, and planning opportunities. Excellent work! Thanks for watching.